been a while. Indeed it has. Yeah, we've been very busy. Yes. This is a special edition Coffee with Tough Souls. Yeah. We're going to talk about the Vandalure Linens project. Yes. So, in case you didn't know, this summer for June and July, I climbed every mountain in Ireland in a new record time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mountain being 600 meters or more mm -hmm. with 15 meters or more of prominence. Yes, um, peakiness. Yeah, I mean, the, like anything, there's like a million classifications. Yeah. This was like 275 mountains. Yes. Definitely like enough mountains. Yeah. <laughs> there was enough mountains. Um, yeah, and, it, and it's pretty good standard. It's similar to yes. other kind of mountain definitions that are used in the UK. And so yeah, it's, it's the Irish list of mountains. Yes, um, any, any lower than this, they're definitely hills. Yes. Yeah. And so this was an island-wide project. So yeah, the North, was... uh, the Republic, and yeah. even Ackle Island. So it wasn't yeah. just the main, mainland. Indeed. <laughs> Lawless, uh, yeah, <laughs> lawless rest of Mayo. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a great project. Yes, 50 days, five hours, and 45 minutes from the time peak. I reached the like, first peak yeah. to the 275th peak. Yes, and yeah, yeah. And the previous record was 56 days, 56 days, so yeah, six days after the old record. Yeah, almost, yeah, which really. What an amazing record. Yes. Uh, James Forrest set that back in 2019. I think, yeah. And um, definitely when we were planning, anyway, yeah. a few years ago, when we were planning this, we were like, that's definitely going to go. Like, yes. we can definitely take that record. Oh my God, it was so hard. <laughs> it was really hard. I'm really, like, every day I woke up impressed by... Yeah, me too. James. James's record. Okay. Yeah. So, fair play to you, James. If you ever see this. <laughs> yeah. So in a bit of a change from the usual Tough Souls projects, um, I was on these mountains solo and Carl was my incredible support crew. Mm. My, yeah, as opposed to the two of, of us one. doing it together, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Which, or, yeah, doing each mountain together. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I definitely felt this year I was going to be more effective as a support crew mm. than being up there with you. And it was the kind of project where we needed a, like whoever was doing the project, be it one of us or both of us, there needed to be a support crew element. Yes. Um, because the most efficient way to climb up a mountain and to do several of them is to then climb down the other side and yeah. not have to go the whole way back or make everything be a loop. Um, Indeed, yeah. yes. The fact that we could do linear routes or you could do linear routes this way yeah. really made a, a, a big uh, impact, I think, on the... Yeah. The record, um, yes. and just on being able to do it comfortably at all. Yeah. So we started in Galway Indeed. and went around the island clockwise. Yeah. Because, handily enough, all of the mountains in Ireland are pretty coastal yeah. and nothing really in the Midlands. And between Galway and Kerry, there's a huge blank bit. So yeah, Clare doesn't have anything that that fits the criteria. Yeah. Um, and the drive from Clare to Kerry is basically like a whole day. Yeah. So you save a day by not doing that drive and, and starting going around this way. Yeah. I did a lot of planning um, yes. related to this. Uh, it's actually a well-known problem. This is the traveling salesman problem for any uh, people who... Um, oh, I didn't know how to name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, how to get between yeah. like, all of these points in like an efficient manner. Yeah. So I did a, a, a bunch of actual work trying to figure out what the efficient route was. Yes. And I think we basically got it. Yeah. I don't think there's any real inefficiencies in, in the route we took. Mm. Um, yes, I think... Which pleases me. Yeah. I think the only thing that could have been more efficient was... Not taking, not going to a wedding halfway through. <laughs> okay. That, yeah, that was a personal caveat. And that mm. was one day. We probably ended up losing two days. Anyway, that's that, that that's a, a future uh, <laughs> point. Yeah, if you want to take this record, top tip: don't have a wedding halfway through. <laughs> um, no, but so the way that we kind of did the project was that 
in different areas we would have a base and go mm. from that base to uh, the mountains. The hub and spoke model, yes. Yes, the hub and spoke. Yes, see, see I, I, I know that. A lot of thinking about this. Um, yes, so but in the, Galway, the, the best way to do it would really be to have a van. To own a van, yeah, yes. Drive to the bottom of your mountain for the next day, the night before. Yes, yeah. because for about 10 days we did have Indeed. This model. Good friend of Tough Souls, yeah. uh, Kieran, came with us for a couple of days. Yes. Um, about two weeks there. Um, and Kieran has a van. Yes. And some people have asked us, like, oh, you know, what was your big sort of learning from this project? Mm. Expecting, I think, to say, oh, I'm so resilient now and I know I, yes. I've found my limits. And my inner peace. The, and... <laughs> the, the learning is we really need a van. Oh. <laughs> we need a van so bad. Yes. Um, it was revolutionary for yeah. doing outdoor adventures in Ireland. Yeah. Um, That's our next project, I think. Mm, yeah. Is buy, is buy and renovate a van. Yeah. Yes. Right yeah. after buying and ven renovating a house. So <laughs> just a glutton for punishment. Um, but yeah, so Kieran was with us for yeah about 10 days, and the three of us stayed in his van and drove kind of through Mayo up into uh, Donegal and that was really really good yeah. um, that worked really really well before that we started off in Galway staying at my dad's house and from there we did the 12 bends first so I did the Glencoe and Horseshoe on my very first day because that was a route that we had done before yeah we had done that before and it's widely regarded as like quite a good mm -hmm. mountain loop so it was very kind of you know you're not going to be starting off just going across bogs for yeah. 10 hours or yeah. something. It's going to be a nice way to do it. Um, and it also kind of was a very good representation of what a typical day was going to be for me. Yeah. So I think it was about 17k lengthwise, roughly. Yeah. Um, I did a, a bit over... A thousand metres of... I think I did about 15, yeah. 16, 1700 metres of elevation that day. Yeah. Um, so it was a really good Yeah, first, indicator. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Because that was the tricky thing coming into the project. I had done some training. Yeah. I hadn't done as much training as yeah, I, I mean, had we live originally in aimed for. Ross Common, there aren't any mountains <laughs> anywhere near yeah. here. Yeah. Um, and so it was hard to train for this. Yeah. Hard to get a representative day. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So it was nice to go out on something that I knew. Um, that I knew was also going to be like challenging but mm. not impossible yeah and kind of make it to the end of that and be like okay yeah now, I have to do now it all only again 49 tomorrow. more days <laughs> yeah yeah but exactly started, uh, it was also very handily the most um correct efficiency wise oh yes uh just it was great this this project really let me kind of um lean into uh, yeah indeed the uh Germanic <laughs> team that I have. Um, yeah, no, it was uh, planning. It was really interesting. Mm. It was really interesting. Yeah. So because every day you needed a route to go up. Yes. We needed to be there. We needed to have you know where you're going, what you're doing, how many yeah. mountains there are, where you're finishing, what the escape routes are, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. Um, every day for 50 days. Yeah. Um, and I took that upon myself to do yes. because you already had enough to do. Mm climbing the mountains yeah um so it was quite interesting actually doing that um yeah because i actually wrote some software to do some of this planning yeah um based on popularity maps of of areas and stuff like that and i lean very heavily on mountainviews.ie mm -hmm. which is the the community and the website that um managed this list in the first place yeah um but they also have all of the various well-known access routes and, mm -hmm. and so on which is great yeah um and so with a little bit of software that i wrote i was able to reasonably quickly you know pick okay i'm starting here i want to do this peak this peak this peak this peak um and finish here mm -hmm. and get a gpx file which then loaded onto your watch um that felt like a very power rangers indeed yeah <laughs> uh it's time to beat voltron or whatever yeah uh it is voltron isn't it anyway it doesn't matter um <laughs> cut uh which made things so much easier so for me. much easier to have the gpx file yes oh my god no, I, I wasn't exclusively using gpx no no i had not. a compass with me on certain days i had physical maps yeah i had different maps on my phone 
it was a combination of everything, but yeah. having the GPX on the watch. Such a safety net. Kind yeah. Of a, yeah. Yeah. And it had all of the peaks marked, so Indeed. I could check that I'd actually made it yeah. to each peak. So, so every GPX came with all of the peaks on it. Yeah. So you knew also there are all the official tops. Yeah. So you also knew in a like foggy day on a tableau kind of a mountain yeah. where you were supposed to be. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Which was very helpful. So after that first day, the real test was having a shower, sleeping, and then getting up the next day mm. and going out and doing it again. I think in my head I had it that the first two weeks of any big project, be it climbing mountains, through hiking a long distance trail, anything in this realm, it's the first two weeks mm. of your body adjusting. That's the difficult part. So yeah. I was just kind of bracing myself to be like, well, these first two weeks are going to be hard, yeah. but then I'll be in it. Yeah, and the first week in particular, if I can do the first week, I can do the project. Mm. Um, and then if I get through the first two weeks, it will start getting easier. Which, what was like... Kind of, yeah. Yeah, so the, yeah, the first 12 days was just Galway Mayo, which felt like a really big chunk to kind of do and achieve. Um, in, within there, there was 50 peaks, mm. and Mayo itself was challenging in that not every peak was easily accessible. Like we, I had one day, which was a 20k round trip, round for trip. A single, one single peak. Yeah, yeah. leave car, yeah. I'll never forget you. It's definitely the most remote one. <laughs> yes, yeah, so there's a few like that. And then we got to stop home for the one time we got to stop home on the whole project and that whole yeah. 50 plus on days. day 13, yeah. we got to come home for like two nights. Yeah, uh, and from here I had two kind of rest days. I did Quilca, which yeah. is on the Cabin Fermanagh border, so the closest one to this area. Yeah. And then on day 14, I did Trustmore, and then we drove up to Donegal. Small enough. Two very easy yeah. days. After after two weeks of doing, you know, five or six peaks a day, to yeah. do two days of one or two peaks was a yeah. big change. I, it's funny looking back at that moment now, at the time, I was like, okay, this is like good. I definitely should have a rest mm. kind of couple of days. I and you, I can't actually know how beneficial they were mm -hmm. because I did them yes. and I was able to keep going. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that is somewhere that I could have shaved off a day yeah. by doing yeah. Yeah. Quilka just more into born mm. in one day. Yes. And then the following day yeah. driving up and, do, and starting in the, the blue stacks. Yeah. Because um, so the, the, there'll always be questions like this. Um, looking yeah at the project as a whole being like oh could I shave could I have shaved off a day here mm. could I have shaved off a day there and one I think of the biggest contributing factors or one of the biggest impacts on the whole project was the weather mm -hmm. yeah like this was bad luck yes you did this project in the wettest summer in Irish history yes um, quite literally it was like the worst weather yeah. Ever. So, yeah, so, like yeah. basically ever. July um, was the wettest July in Irish record. Yeah, by like a factor of three or something. Oh, it, it, in it, some it, places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It went up to almost uh, like 3.8 times, almost four times more rain in some areas of the West Coast yeah. than usual. It wasn't just yeah. that it was like 110% more. Yeah. It was... No, it was absolutely atrocious. Yeah. Yes. I think if that weather... We'd been really lucky because the first two weeks was pretty okay weather-wise. Yeah. yeah, it was incredibly humid. Yeah. But, but it was on the warm side and not, yeah. the, not the wet side. Yeah. And that was okay. Yeah. And then the weather hit. Yeah. But it was like, if, if that weather had been, you know... Oh, from the start. If, if you started two weeks later. Oh. And if you'd had that rain, it, you would have abandoned it, I'm sure. Yeah. Like, there, it was just atrocious weather. But by the time you had like a hundred peaks done, yeah. you weren't going to stop for bad weather unless it was, yeah. you know, yeah. unsafe. And yeah. even then... <laughs> Yeah, because I guess by the end of the first two weeks, or j just over two weeks, uh, we were finished in Egal and we were moving into Northern Ireland, and that's when I felt that fitness increase. That, mm -hmm. like, I was at like day 16 or whatever, mm -hmm. and I felt that kind of like, okay, we got this. I managed to like run a bit of some of the Donegal mountains, um, mm -hmm. like on Aragon and stuff, so it was definitely like improving. Um, did the Sparrows, which were a little uh, nondescript. Made it to the Morns, which were 
very descriptive. <laughs> yeah. Um, the Moorings were really, really interesting. It felt like, like it's a really well developed outdoor recreation area. Um, probably the most well developed on the island. Certainly the most well developed, I'd say. Especially yeah. for the dent, like it's quite yeah. Yeah. dense. It's like maybe small. Not, maybe not definitely the most popular, but certainly the most well developed. Yeah, like it's it's up it's up there with pop popularity everywhere. as yeah, well. Yeah. yeah, I will say that that it didn't feel very wild. Mm. That might just be because it was such a sunny time and there was those of other people out in the mountains. Mm. But yeah, you flying were through beginning the morning, to really yeah, get the kind of yeah momentum yeah. going, and I rolled my ankle. Yeah. Um, which is something that I, it's been like an ongoing, I'm not going to yeah. say injury throughout was, my life. It was but it's going been, to happen. Yeah, something was like, you have to yeah. kind of prepare. Um, which was painful. It wasn't so bad an injury that I actually had to stop, mm. which was great. But it did mean I had to slow right down to let it heal and to actually be able to keep moving every day. Yeah. Which was a little hard. It was unfortunate because we were like the Moorns and then it's Wicklow yeah. and for Wicklow we were again staying with Kieran. Yes. again big thank you to Kieran. Um we actually I don't think we could have done this project without Kieran's help so yeah. thanks Kieran. Um <laughs> but we stayed at his house yes. for like a week there and he's basically in the Wicklow mountains yeah. and it would have been probably five days to do every mountain in Wicklow uh, only for yes. you rolled your ankle so it was more like ten days yes um and, that, Which, and that's know, also when the bad weather yes, started. Really began. Yeah. yeah, and it's funny because like I didn't know, it, like I obviously didn't know at the time that this was the start of of, of the whole rest <laughs> of the project being wet. Wet, you like yeah. so wet. And I remember on um, like one or two days being like, okay, I think this is the worst weather day of the project yeah. so far. And in my head being like, well, at least I'm getting it over and done with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's like. <laughs> It's it, like the, the weather just kept getting yeah. worse. Yeah, it's also funny because like you can, you can kind of play mind games with yourself to keep yourself going in mm. higher moments, being like, oh, but this is the low point. Yeah. Like, this, <laughs> <laughs> this, like, <And> every day, <laughs> every two hours, you're like, this is the worst it could be. It'll, so therefore, surely it'll get better. <laughs> it's like if I get through this yeah. and through the low point. It's like, well, at least the car is dry. <laughs> um, it wasn't dry very often. No. But yeah. So yeah. Uh, yeah, the weather was a huge, huge factor. Yeah. Huge factor. And so, and in regards to kind of like where we'd stayed and kind of accommodation and, and camping and stuff, we had, yeah, done uh, indoor for Galway, camping slash van for Mayo, Donegal. Cam camping for, camping all, for of all, North, yeah. all of Northern Ireland. Indoors for Wicklow. And then we had indoors for basically most of the way to Kerry. Mm. And then Kerry, the plan was just camp for all yeah. of Kerry. Because yeah. um, it's just one of the most affordable ways to kind of be down there. And did we manage, we just did one night. No, no, no. No, we did the Bear Peninsula. Bear, yes. Um, we did a little bit of kind of around Killarney and the Bear Peninsula camping. Yeah. And it was, we, we moved up to the Dingle Peninsula. So the order I kind of did, the Kerry was... Yeah. It was kind of Bera, Dingle, Ivra. Yeah. Um, Basically for difficulty reasons. Ivra is the hardest yeah, peninsula. Yeah, and the, so. the densest. And yeah. yeah. So I was <coughs> exhausted. So it was day 40 and I was on Dingle and that was actually yeah. the low point. I remember, like, it was... Kerry has such amazing mountains that the really famous ones get all the traffic and that makes sense because they are actually stunning mountains yes. and it means that there are some mountain ranges there that are really nice but don't really get the traffic because if you because only why would you go to this mountain range when you could go to that one yeah yeah uh, so i was on one of the kind of lesser known mountains there were trails on some sections but in other sections it was just bog and i've been really really pushing myself through a, a boggy section and i my, my watch buzzes and I look down and it took me 26 minutes to do the previous kilometre and that just kind of broke me. I was so tired. I was trying so hard to move and the best I could do was 26 um, minutes, which is yeah. actually a very fine time. But your goal pace was 
Like, 15 or less, basically. Yeah, 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 exactly. I was trying to be, yeah, 15 yeah. or less. Um, and But sometimes, like, you just can't do that kind of a pace when there is no trail, and it's just bog or just whatever. And But I was too tired to kind of rationalize yeah, it like that. Yeah, understand why, yeah. Um, and so I <laughs> cried myself across those peaks. <laughs> and I heroically came to the rescue. Yes. Like a hero, <laughs> I walked up maybe... <laughs> This is karma. I, I walked up maybe two thirds of the like the last peak for you, like to come up to that, to, to see you. That I was like, really got me. How does anyone do? Like genuinely, I'm not unfit, right? No. Or at least at the start of this project, I was not unfit. Um, I I had run a marathon like a, a month before the start of this project. I was definitely in okay shape, and I walked up maybe three of those peaks with you. They're impossible. I genuinely do not know how you did all of them. And I say this knowing how hard these things are. Yeah. I have no idea how you managed to push yourself through. Like, if I had done that, all you would have seen of me was complaining. <laughs> 110% of the time, I would have been like, that sucked, this sucks, I want to go home, this is bad. And instead, like, you were just like, <laughs> the whole time except this one day where you acted like I would have acted the entire project mm. like I I walked up literally two thirds of that absolutely like wrecked wrecked I was I hadn't moved in fairness for like the whole project yeah but even so I maybe climbed like 350 meters or something and was like oh my god <laughs> this is the worst um, but anyway, I was a, an amazing hero and yes. uh, rescued you from your yeah. from your malaise. Yeah, yeah. And that was the first night that we stayed in the um, Mount Brandon hostel, and that's yes. what we basically used for our base for the Dingo Peninsula. Yes. And um, a lovely hostel. Yeah. We stayed there when we did the Dingo Way. Also, highly yeah. recommended. It's yeah. Really lovely place. Yeah. Yeah. And then for Drummer or for the Ivory Peninsula, we stayed in Drummond Hostel. Yes. So, also a fantastic place. Yes. They were uh, highly, so nice. highly recommended. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was ideal location as well. It's right in the middle of the, um, the oh. peninsula, so yeah. you can really get to anywhere from there. Yeah. We'd really meant to do more camping. Well, it, the funny thing is, there was this moment where, like, when I was coming off the mountain and Carl had decided I was too wrecked to, to sleep in a tent anymore yeah. um, because I just wasn't getting the recovery. When the we when the weather was that bad, yeah. you'd lie in, awake at night in the tent. Listening to the... Listening to the... Uh, yeah. yeah, having the tent hit you in the face from the wind. So, like, yeah. it was really... The weather was that bad. Yeah. Um, and so Carl... Like the whole point of having a crew is to have somebody to make the decisions for you so that you don't have to it, it's one less load on your mind and so carl was like okay we're staying we're booking yeah. into this hostel we're staying there um and there was a teeny bit of me that felt like i was failing in not camping more hmm. until i had the realization that the project was nothing to do with camping <laughs> <laughs> and only to do with mountains um, yes. Yes, which is a, a, a funny realization. There, but I don't think there's a single point along this project where you would have been quicker had you camped more. Like, okay, like yeah. at, beforehand, we were thinking like, okay, maybe if you you go up and then camp up there yeah. and then continue on. Yeah. But because we were able to manage the routes, yeah, I just made it so that the yeah. days would end and at points where you wouldn't have camped anyway. Yeah, and the. The whole thing was a balancing act of doing just enough every day that I was progressing, that I was getting enough peaks done, that I was covering enough distance and enough elevation, but not tipping onto the other side of the knife edge where I was doing too much and that I wouldn't be able to get up again the next day. Mm. So I think like keeping that balance was such an impossible Yeah. Uh, task because uh, you, you can't tell if you're tipping over like I think one or two like the only times that we started to tip over once or twice was um, finishing in Wicklow there was like what seven peaks I think yeah. that were kind of solo peaks yeah that, through, oh, that like, long day of, that long day yeah, where yeah, yeah. I we, we'd drive to peak I'd get out do the solo up and down and then we'd drive on to the next yeah. one we did that seven times or we did it five times for seven peaks yes or something like that. Yeah. One of the more logistically challenging days for sure. Yeah. And 
and it wasn't even the, like I think I did 37k and 2000 and something meters of elevation I mean it was for sure a big day but it was I think it was actually that we also finished like we got I got to bed that night at 1am yeah and it was that yes knock on sleep effect yeah that made you it, that next, had like a week of, of yeah of then effects, Tipperary yeah. I was just so yeah because after that yeah, you basically had, sleepwalked the whole way through yeah the knock me downs the yeah. cameras and most of the galties I mean in a way it's positive that it happened there because yes. you know those mountains fairly well yes um, yeah those are some of the mountains I knew the best going into the exactly project. so sleepwalking up some of those not such a big deal compared no. with if you had to do that in Kerry yeah I mean, which was, didn't... which was the county that had the most mountains and they were the mountains that I had never climbed. Yeah, practically half of all of the mountains in Ireland on this list are in Cork and Kerry, just down in those three peninsulas. Yeah. Like, that's it. Um, half. There's, well, no, there's, there's 100 down there out of the 275. So, the, it's a yeah, third. So, so by the time we'd finished Wicklow, we had done about half. Half of all the So, things. Tipperary, Wexford, and. Uh, Washford, uh, Waterford, kinda, so yeah, yeah, like Limerick. That kind of. Belt. Exactly. Yeah. That's another half. It, it's a lot of mountains down there. Yes. They're all, I don't want to say real mountains, but they're all challenging mountains. In yes. Kerry. Yeah. There's very few sort of like, there are some mountains that you did on this project that are like. Yep, Rolling Hills style. You know, yeah. Um, still mountains, still on the list, you know, yeah, yeah. whatever. But the ones in Kerry, especially yes. on the Ivory Peninsula, yeah. are genuinely challenging mountains. Yeah. Um, even for someone who has done 200 and, rounds prior. And that was also an interesting decision to make at the start, was do I start in Galway and work my way around? Mm, start on the easier side and work to the harder ones, or yeah. vice versa? Yeah, well actually I think Galway, like now looking at the whole project, Galway was hard too. Like the west coast yeah. has the more challenging mountains, yes. the, like for me personally. Um, so Galway was never going to be like the easy start point, but it was do I start there and then have the experience of having climbed every other mountain on the island before I get to Kerry? Yeah. Or do I start in Kerry with the energy mm. of the start of the project? And I'm glad I did it the way I did it mm. because I did increase in like fitness and everything as the whole thing went on. By the time I got to Kerry, I had the experience and I actually was able to do the same length of a day, if not a bigger day, by the time I got there, yeah. through what I built up. Oh, definitely, definitely. Okay. So, like, for the first couple of days, when I get up in the morning, I'd have to go down the stairs backwards, because <laughs> my legs were so yeah. kind of wrecked. And, like, definitely some of the days that you pulled and carry, you couldn't have done at the start. No. There's no way. No. There's no way you could have pushed yourself to do. No. Like, 19 peaks. Yeah, that, your, my biggest you know, day. 19. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big day. Yeah. That's a that's a huge, huge day. That's every single mountain in the... Um, the Reeks. The Caligody Reeks, yeah. Yeah, apart from Hag's Tooth. Hag's Tooth, which is like one of the questionable... We, yeah. <laughs> it's definitely... It, it, it meets the criteria. Yeah. It is very cool. So Hag's Tooth <laughs> is a, like a rock... Yeah, outcrop, it's a rock stack, really. A yeah. rock stack, yeah. yeah. Um, in the mountains. Yeah. That when I was doing the, the Reeks... There was a point where I could have descended down and climbed up it and then climbed back up and then continued along to do as I did all the others, but decided that was too challenging to add in to a day that already had... 19 peaks in it. Yeah. Yeah, like every other peak had um, all the tallest mountains in Ireland. Yeah. Like eight of the ten tallest mountains in Ireland that day. Yeah. Um, and also day. in there, there was um, two sections. So there's one section called the Bones, um, which is kind of part of one of the horseshoes that takes in Karen Tool, and then you also had the traverse uh, across a uh, big gun mm. uh, or the uh, Loch Yeah. and both of those sections were quite kind of technical yeah scrambly actual, like, like knife edge yeah, uh, yeah real thin ridges yeah. which is um, cool stuff yeah but you would have been a lot more I'd say afraid of that if you had done it on day four yes yeah um, yeah by day 45 you were like this, like you didn't yeah. even text me about it <laughs> yeah. like uh, you know um, did I not? I don't think so <laughs> um, yeah yeah so gained a lot of experience through yes. the project for yeah. Sure. yeah yeah it was a very interesting project it's the first one I would say that we have done the first project that was actually a time based record breaking type of thing yeah which had some maybe 
different feelings to it yeah. than other things we've done in the past. Yeah. Um, I'll say freely that I am the one focused on <laughs> beating a record. I just, yeah. I see a record and I'm like, that's mine, I gotta get that. Um, or that's mine adjacent. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I. We all know who did the more work. Like, who, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. Obviously, you're the, you're the record holder. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I definitely, I was the one more focused on getting, mm. on beating the record, on beating the 56 days, on doing it as fast as possible. And there was definitely some friction there mm. because of that, because I was pushing to get it done quicker. Mm. Um, but that was kind of, ne- I think it was kind of necessary yeah, for it to be that way between the two of us. I think also just a really difficult balance. Like, it must be very hard to be a coach for things like this, because mm. it's like, you know, I knew you could do it. Yeah. I knew for a fact that you could get it in the 50 days. Yeah. Um, but you were like maybe 53, yeah. 54. And I was like, there is no, like, you know, yeah. to me there was no point in saying 53, 54 days when I knew you could do it in 50. Yeah. And this kind of thing, which it yeah. was interesting. Yeah. Like it's an interesting like, I, dynamic I, 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 that was very I'm different glad, to, to usual. I'm glad we had that dynamic because mm. I... The reason I wanted to do the project was to climb every mountain in Ireland, yeah, not it wasn't to, to have the record. The record. Yeah. Um, and I think that was important for me because... Mm. If you'd focused on the time, it would have been a very different... Yeah, I wouldn't have yeah. actually absorbed any of the mountains I was climbing. Mm. Um, yeah, this way you got to still be there. Yes. And I still got to get the record for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it was just like a much healthier approach. I, I don't really want to... Like I, I'm, I was really interested in how doing an, a, a record would change my experience of, of going through somewhere. Um, like, would I still kind of feel like I'm, I'm experiencing the place or seeing the place? Mm. And I think for this one, I can say yes, because I was in the mountains for like nine hours a day. And so, like, I, I wasn't moving fast for the majority of it. Once I actually rolled both of my ankles, then, yeah. um, <laughs> as the project went on, so the whole thing had to stay at a at a slow pace. So I did actually get to see and absorb and kind of, mm-hmm. um, like, if I if it's a marathon where you're kind of running, running. Yeah. Um, you wouldn't have. I, yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't have taken it in the yeah. same way. Yeah. Yeah. So, which is interesting for sure. Yeah. I, I think that was a, a really interesting thing to, to think about and to look at yeah and it, um, and it keeps you going because on the bad the, the day, love of the mountains yeah the love of the going, mountains yeah. as opposed to the, the want of the for of, sure yeah another reason I couldn't have done this project yeah um, because I want the record yeah I want the record sure I like the mountain I want the record though yeah where I think for you it was very much the other way around yeah uh, the, the record was like a nice to have incidental to this yeah um kind of a thing yeah where it like, was the love of the mountains that kept you going yeah 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 like setting off i had the goal to do all these mountains before my like the end of 2024 it was like like if i don't get this record if i don't if something happens if i break my leg if whatever if i like if i can't do this project now mm. i am still going to do all these mountains just over a longer yeah. period and so what yeah. yeah and i think it also changed the end of the project for me mm. it was strange because I was thinking about this on the last day. I, I felt a lot of relief on the last day. Mm. I did not feel, re- I've never felt relief at the end of a project before like that. Huh. Like any of the other things we've done, yeah. it wasn't relief yeah. as such. But this one, relief. Yeah. And I'm not sure why. Um, I definitely felt relief. But I think it was because at that point, I was so exhausted uh, from yeah, the weather. The, and the last, the last week, I, I push you hard to get the yeah. the, the men's done. I think like I, it was a hard push because of the weather. Yes. Like. Yeah. If if the weather had been perfect. Yeah. It would have been. It would have been. Fifteen yeah. twenty percent easier, I'd say. Yeah. At least actually. Yeah. yeah. Like, I'll never forget going up, um, Knocknagapple. Mm. There's a, a lake beside it, and so I think I'd already done a mountain that morning. Yes, you had. And so we parked at this lake. So I had to get get out into the rain again, mm. which is hard on a good day. But to get up the mountains, I had to go along the side of the lake, which is completely exposed. Yeah, and it's like fully, it's hard to describe. Like, on the one side, there's nothing for miles and miles. On the other side, there's just lake. So 
it's just rain like it yeah yeah so just crossing it was a battle through the wind and rain and then i got to the trail that was kind of going up the mountain and it's one of those like using the word trail is tricky because there's definitely a visible route mm. it's not a trail no uh, well this one certainly wasn't because no, it was a waterfall because it was a waterfall and i, I felt very lara croft <laughs> um, <laughs> and yeah it was a it was one of those is this a subjective or objective decision to climb this? Like, am I climbing this because I want to climb this versus am I climbing this? Is it, is it smart to climb this the way it is? Um, and I knew that going up it was going to be fine and going down I'd have to reassess. Um, but like that climb and the three peaks up there and coming back down took me three times as long as it should have because mm. I could only see for four meters. Yeah. The wind and the rain was hitting me so hard yeah. that, yeah, it, it, it sapped the energy of, yeah. or as if I was doing 12 peaks and not three. Yeah. So, yeah. I will say, I'm, I think we managed to do that quite safely. Yeah. Um, another reason to have a support, mm -hmm. I think, is that, you know, I was always aware of where you were, what yeah. you were doing. Yeah, I um, text you at nearly every peak to say exactly. that I made it there and I sent you a selfie at nearly everyone. Yeah, I, like, I knew where you were, I knew when to expect you, yeah. etc. If something had happened, I would have yeah. had a good sense of, of where you were. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, also there is a factor of, I knew that you could do this. Yeah. It, and you knew you could, like, there wasn't... Yeah. Obviously, you can't feel nature. There's no, like, hubris no. isn't going to save you in, in yeah. some moments. But, like, there was no point, I think, there were maybe one or two points where, mm. yeah, you could have been hit by lightning, maybe. <laughs> that would have, like, yeah. But also, you can't really, you know. Yeah. I, I think we managed to do that as safely as possible, given... Yes, given the goal. Yes. And the terrain yeah. and the, the weather. Yeah. And it, like, yeah, it would have been 10 times safer if the weather had been any better. Yeah. And it, it, it's funny because like weather is such a, a big topic in Ireland that to, when people are like, oh, what was the hardest part? And to say the weather, mm. it, it, it's hard to get across. <laughs> yeah, I think people get disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I thought the weather was bad too. It's like, yeah, well, you were inside. <laughs> Yeah, um, or, or I feel like I should be saying, oh, at the time I had to battle a bear. Wow. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I had to save a group of nuns from a raging crocodile. <laughs> uh, or a dinosaur. Doesn't Lara Croft fight dinosaurs in one of the games? Oh, I... You, you, she does. I, I, I said that as a question, but I know for a fact that there are dinosaurs in, in Tomb Raider 1 and 2. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't sound very adventurous to say the weather was the hardest part. Yes. Um, but, yeah. But it was. Sure it was yeah. yeah. So I guess gear-wise, uh, one review has actually already gone up before this video, which mm. is about my rain jacket, of course, <laughs> the weather, <laughs> uh, the Patagonia Storm 10, which did amazing. Practically every single mountain with you. Yes. Um, yeah. Well, it was always it was yeah. always with me, whether yes. I was wearing yeah. it or it was in the, the yeah. bag. Um, yeah. yeah. And in general, I went with the kind of running style, so mm. I was wearing. Um, light, as light gear as I could. Uh, I wasn't always running, but I was moving the fastest I could mm. for the situation. Yeah. So it was an endurance attempt. Indeed. Not necessarily running all the time. I mean, but there had been a, until your ankle, yeah. there was a lot more sort of, this is gonna, this is a running project. Or this or is, is gonna like transition more running, towards trail yeah. running, yes. Yeah. And then after my ankles, it was, this is just get to the end. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> 50 days is just a lot, like a long time to push hard. Yes. And yeah, the risk of injury was always going to be, it was always a factor. Yeah. And then once I did have those rolls, I, um, yeah, I didn't want to tempt fate any more than I had. So mm. that was key to slowing down. No, I think that was the right call. Yeah. But I, also having as little gear with you as you can feasibly safely, bring. Safely, yeah. Yeah, safely, do. yeah. Um, majorly impacts your, your speed and your comfort. Oh, comfort, yeah, comfort so much. Yeah. And actually, so it's, it's kind of funny, I get uh, messages or comments about a few different things. One of them was all of the shots, I'm, I wore shorts. I, yeah. I had two pairs of identical shorts that I wore for the whole project. 
people say, oh, but you're in the lashing rain. What are you doing in shorts? <laughs> Your legs dry faster than, than trousers would have. Like <laughs> legs dry faster than the trousers yeah. do. Yeah. Um, and again, it wasn't like you were um, camping up there in that no. either. Like we had the car, you were going to be warm as soon as you got back. Yeah. Um, it wasn't, yeah. I was. I, I you spent, had a foil blanket with you in case something yeah, yeah. particularly bad happened, etc. Yeah, yeah. I spent very little time, or as little time as I could afford, still. So, I, yeah, I wasn't going to get cold um, from the shorts, and they were just the most effective at dry. <laughs> yeah, keeping dry, drying out. Yeah. Um, being relatively clean to put it back on the next day. <laughs> <laughs> clean. Mm -hmm. um, that car smelled so bad. But the smell was from the shoes. Yes. The so shoes, I also yeah. wore trail runners for the whole project. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, a lot of people question that. Yeah. Asking why you weren't wearing boots. And I have worn a lot of boots. There's yeah, of course, hundreds there's of videos <laughs> to, uh, to, to see the different boots yes. that I've worn throughout the different trails yeah. we've walked. But I am just a lot more of a trail shoe, trail runner person. Yeah. I will wear boots, but I just feel so much more comfortable, so much more secure mm. and kind of safe in myself. Um, yeah, less in, clunky. In trail runners. Yeah. yeah. And they like also just they're like, again, they're repetitive every single day. They're lighter on your feet. For me, they're more cushioned and kind yeah. of more accommodating. Like you practically got no blisters. Oh yeah, like I had. For example, a, like yeah. uh, you would have gotten some in boots. Yeah, I, like, no question. Yeah, and also we could afford to have more than one pair of trail runners For on sure. the rotation. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, and you could find them. You yes. Know, you so had I, I had. I had. I. So I started off with two pairs. I actually just wore one pair for the first week 10 days and then I started rotating between two pairs yes and then by the time I kind of got around to Tipperary that first pair were I had were, <laughs> they were in bits they were in bits so it was then more heavily on the second pair and we yes. bought an, a, the third pair like an emergency pair on yes the way. Yeah. Uh, on the way to Kerry so yeah. then I finished rotating those two final pairs yes um, so I went through about two and a half pairs of shoes in the project yeah um, which is actually pretty good yeah because it actually was almost exactly like so evenly 1000 kilometers yeah yeah which was bizarre and very yeah. satisfying yeah um, well that's also that's only if you count it as a sorry to get yeah. too detailed here but that's only if you count flat distance oh. it doesn't actually count the diagonal yeah that you might have done so you've actually probably done more than that it's probably more like 1200 or 1300 given given the elevation gain that you had yes. over the time because Just for so. the elevation i gained uh, 68,336 68, yeah. something like it's a lot yes it's a lot yeah it's a lot of meters yeah it's a lot of meters to climb yeah so i think at the end i was averaging 150k a week and about 10 or 12,000 meters yeah. i can't quite remember um yeah but it's a lot it yeah it was the most i've ever done and it's it was funny that before that i was trying to get a couple of thousand meters of elevation done each week that was like the goal for training but then when i actually was on the mountains every day i knew it was going to be 1500 meters or more elevation every per day per day yeah. <laughs> yeah. um yeah, yeah. <laughs> but i think that this was one of those projects where you can't train for, like the training for it is doing it yeah at least where we are now the situation we were in where we yeah. live etc it just wasn't yeah work life schedule exactly can't yeah. can't really train this project without doing the project yes if we live right next to a vandler yeah um, that would have been great but we don't yeah and so uh, i guess one of the most frequently asked questions i've gotten since finishing was which was my favorite mountain and it's a hard call i liked a lot of them i really loved Donegal. i loved muckish um I loved the Mam Turks. Kerry is amazing. So, so. the question is, which was your least favorite mountain? <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. What's your favorite? So I think if I'm going to pick, pick a favorite, one, pick one. I'm going to pick Donegal. That's not a mountain. That's a county. <laughs> I'm going to pick Muckish. Yeah, Muckish sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Other, I would say, runners up yes. are uh, the one in Ackle. Oh, Sleep Moor. Yeah. Oh, I really, really like Sleep Moor. Yeah, Sleep Moor is nice. That, yeah, I didn't do a, it, but it looked great. That was a big favorite yeah. because climbed the mountain, came back down, directly straight onto the into, beach. Literally walked straight into the sea. Yes. <laughs> like, 
um, which yeah, is a beautiful high, way to finish. A, a very high ranking mountain, that one, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. So there, are, there are a lot of good mountains. I have to make a list of like my favorite areas. Favorite five mountains. That's but, it. Yeah. Yeah. But in general. Yes. We're going to do a Q and A. Yeah. So I we've don't got know. lots of questions. We didn't talk about like half the stuff we could have talked about. Yeah. But I don't know what you want to know. It was already like a million years long. Um, yeah, but exactly. Um, what do you want to know about the project? Yeah, especially questions for me. I did so much in this project. And <laughs> I just don't get. I don't get to talk about it. You know, no, no one cares. No, no one cares about no it recognition. At all. Zero. Like, I edited every single video. It was so hard. Mm. Poor thing. Yeah, Elliot. It's all the other videos. <laughs> the um, one that I can't answer is no. I do not know what project is next. <laughs> please don't ask us that. I don't know what's next. This is one of the few don't times... Don't send me any lists or anything like that as well, please. That would be really bad. I was going to say, this is one of the few times that I don't have an idea of a project to do now. Yes. And I'm kind of okay with that. Yeah, that was a big one. Yeah. That was a big one. It took a lot yeah. out of us yeah. to do it. Um, and, it, like, that's a really, really big project. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I did also want to say absolutely huge thank you to all of our patrons yeah we literally we lived off of the money from patreon for this project yeah. we, we couldn't have done it another way yeah um it, this project would not have happened except for the yeah. support of, of everyone on patreon so a massive 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 thank you to you yeah. um yeah. yeah i thought about you every day for the entire project no. Ellie didn't at all, she doesn't like you. <laughs> That's not true. But anyway. <laughs> Let's wrap it up. Yeah, okay. Okay, thanks for watching. Yeah. Send us your questions. Um, don't send me any lists. Yeah. I don't need to know another high score. <laughs> I'll see you in the next video. Yeah. Okay. What about all the lakes? All the lakes? All the waterways? But what would you do with them? Uh, like, touch them? Don't touch every one. Yeah, touch every island. Every island? Yeah. Every... Every inland island. Is there a list? I'll make one, yeah. Is there a pre-existing record is the question. Something I really liked about doing all the trails was I didn't, no one had done them all before, so any time that we did was going to be a record. It's a big part of the reason that I enjoyed that one so much compared to this one. Okay. <laughs>